So I've said lots of nice things about the Frege russell theory of names up until now. It's consistent with Russell's acquaintance principle, his metasemantic principle about names. It helps us solve Frege's problem, it helps us solve the problem of non-existence. Just because Russell's theory of descriptions already solved analogous puzzles the last week, or arguably did. But I want to close by considering something that's, I suppose, kind of an obvious problem when you think about it for this view. The idea that as Russell gave it was that every name is basically a description in disguise. Even though names sort of look different from descriptions, it doesn't look like the name is a description, the, name, the meaning of a name really is a description. The problem though is when you start thinking about, well, what description is a name associated with? Because remember, the whole point of saying that a name is associated with the description is to explain why you're able to know the meaning of it. Because we're able to talk about lots of things and think about lots of things that we're not acquainted with. And Russell's solution was supposed to be, well, the reason we're able to do this is because really the name means the same thing as a description, the components of which we really are acquainted with. But remember, different people are acquainted with different things. So it's kind of hard to see how there would be one description that will work for everybody. And in fact, the descriptions that people actually use to think about people seem to vary. So let me start with two examples of this. Let's go back to Kanye West. So for instance, I was using the description, the guy who interrupted Taylor Swift at the VMAs. You may or may not know that that's something that happened. Uh, it actually did happen, but you may or may not know that. There are plenty of other ways you might think of uh, Kanye West. For instance, alternatively, you might think of him as the rapper who created the album Yeezus, or you might think of him as the guy who was married to Kim Kardashian. There are lots of different ways to pick out uh, Kanye West uniquely, and it's pretty unlikely that there's one way that we all used to do that. There might be a particularly dramatic example. So, for instance, think about Kim Kardashian. Well, maybe I'm not directly acquainted with Kanye West, but Kim Kardashian is definitely directly acquainted with Kanye West. So does the name mean a description for her? It just becomes hard to see exactly what the picture really is when we start think when we start being realistic and realizing that, well, actually, the kinds of things that people are acquainted with vary. Uh, and different people are going to be acquainted with different things. And for that reason, it's going to vary what kind of descriptions people use to pick out objects. It's even going to vary whether they actually use descriptions at all. Because if, you know, if you're acquainted with an object and I'm not, then only one of us would need to use the name as a description. Kim Kardashian doesn't need to use the name Kanye West as a disguised description. So the question then is, well, if names really are descriptions, what descriptions are they? Uh, what description could we all possibly be using when we think about Kanye West? Because if you think about it, it looks like there are lots of different possible descriptions, probably lots of us think about them in different ways. And so it seems very implausible that there's any one description that could be the meaning of the name Kanye West. That's one example. Let me give you just one more example as well. So think about yourselves and, and your own name. So obviously you have changed, just like everybody, you've changed a lot since you were a baby. You're, com you know, almost completely different from how you were as a baby. Uh, and yet you've had the same name, most likely, for your entire life. So compare the use of your name at the beginning of your life to the use of your name right now. Is there any description that really could be picking you out in both cases? That, such that anybody who knew the meaning of your name would be using that description? It's hard to see that there is, because you've just changed so much. Like, what property could we have been using at the beginning to pick you out, to think about you, that we could still be using. There may not be like no options here, but it's pretty hard to see what description could plausibly do the work here. So what we see in both of these examples is that it's very hard to find any one description that would allow anybody to know the meaning of that name. Because even amongst the people who all have to think about somebody under a description rather than through acquaintance, there's lots of different descriptions we use to think about people, so it's hard to see what one description could be the meaning of the name. Now Russell actually does seem to be aware of this problem in the paper that we read, because he says, at one point in the paper, he says something like this. He says, Moreover, the description required to express the thought will vary for different people, or for the same person at different times. The only thing constant, so long as the name is rightly used, is the object to which the name applies. 
But to be honest, I think that this really... Here, Russell is playing down the scale of the problem here, that really, he, really he's not kind of fully owning up to what the challenge this, this, this is for his idea. It seems like he's getting dangerously close to the idea that the name just means different things in different people's mouths. So for instance, if I think about Kanye West as the guy who inter interrupted Taylor Smith, and you think about him as the guy who created the album Yeezus, it looks like he's getting dangerously close to saying that the name in my mouth just means something different from what it means in your mouth. And remember, we've kind of already given plenty of arguments to think like that's not the right way to think about it. We, there, we, what we would really like to say is there's just one meaning to the name Kanye West, and it's something that people either understand or they don't. Um, you either understand the meaning correctly if you associate it with the right person or the right description or something like that, or you understand the name, or you don't understand the name correctly. So you either associate it with the wrong person, or you associate it with the wrong description, or something like that. We don't really want to go in for this thing Russell seems to be hinting at, where what a, what a name really means depends on who's saying it at what time. The other reason why this would be a problem is because it's not like it would be a special case or a one-off. There are just so many different objects. Remember, most of the objects that we can think about are objects that we have to think about by description on the way Russell is thinking about it. But there's just no reason to think in general that everybody's going to be using the same description. What really seems to be the most likely thing is that different people are often using different descriptions. There's rarely like, you know, for anything, there's rarely just like one thing that everybody knows about it. Most people know, you know, when they know it has some unique property, what property they have in mind will probably vary from person to person. So not only would certain names mean different things in different people's mouths, but we would actually expect that to happen a lot. It wouldn't be an isolated case. It would have, like, basically, for anything that most people think about by description, probably we would have to say the name for that thing means different things in different people's mouths. And as we said, that's something we don't really want to have to say. The reason I wanted you to look at the Searle paper as well is because Searle does suggest a, a solution to this problem. And so Searle's idea is, well, maybe the problem for Russell arose because we insisted on that a name should be paired with a unique description. The way we phrase Russell's theory, there was, there was exactly one description that was associated with each name, and that was the meaning. But maybe it's more complicated than that. So the thing that Searle suggests is that, well, maybe a name gets associated with what we might call a cluster of descriptions. And think of a cluster, it's just a long, it's just a kind of list of different descriptions. So this way of thinking about it, the cluster of descriptions for Kanye West would be something like the guy who took to Taylor Swift, the guy who was married to Kim Kardashian, the guy who wrote the album Jesus. There would be a cluster of descriptions like that associated with his name. And the idea here would be that in order to know the meaning of a name, you wouldn't necessarily have to know everything in the cluster. You would just have to know some or enough of the things in the cluster. So you might not have to know of Kanye West all three of those descriptions, uh, just one might be enough. In other cases maybe you'd have to know that the majority of descriptions apply, or maybe some, some descriptions might be more important than others. But the general idea is that we have this kind of cluster, and the reason the cluster will help is because we don't have to know all of them. So how would the cluster actually work? Well let's take the example of Kanye West. The idea is something like the name, the, the meaning of the name Kanye West comes with a cluster of descriptions. You know, the guy who interrupted Taylor Swift, the guy who wrote Jesus, the guy who married. Kardashian. So the cluster theory says, well, there isn't just a unique description associated with the name as part of its meaning. Rather, there's like a whole a whole list of them. And you don't have to know all of the descriptions, or in order to know the meaning of the name, you don't have to know all of the descriptions apply to the guy Kanye West. You just have to know some of them. So for instance, it might be enough to, to know just, well, he 
that he that he wrote the album Jesus. Now there's a bit of disagreement amongst people who like this theory about how many how many of the descriptions you would need to know. Some people say it might need need to be the majority or maybe just some large proportion. Likewise, you might think that like not all descriptions are created equal, maybe some of them are more important than others. So some versions of the theory will say, well some descriptions are more important and they count for more than whether you understand the name. There are lots of different options here for how you want to spell out the theory. But the main idea is that, well, ha setting aside for a moment, however many of them in particular you have to know, there is some list of descriptions and knowing the meaning of the name does not require knowing all of them. It just requires some or most or some suitably large proportion. So that's the cluster version of the Frege Russell theory. And it was probably the most popular version of the view right up until the text we were going to read next time came out, uh, Kripke's Naming and Necessity. And the reason why it's so popular is because, well, on the one hand, as we saw, the Frege Russell theory has lots of benefits. It chimes with this idea that in order to know the name of something, you really have to know what it is in some sense. But it also helps us with Frege's problem, and it also helps us with the problem of non-existence. So it was a very popular theory. It was probably like the dominant theory of names. However, what we're going to see next week um, is that Kripke is going to launch what basically people think is a devastating attack on this theory. This theory has almost completely fallen out of favour on the basis of the text that we're going to read next time. But I'll say as well, one of the benefits of the theory, or one of the benefits of what Kripke does in the text we're going to read next week, is he spells out very, very clearly what the, what the cluster version of the theory is. Because as you'll see in the Searle, like Searle clearly suggests something like this idea, but he leaves lots of the details vague. So when we see Kripke next time, the very first thing he's going to do is he's going to state the theory much, much, much more precisely than basically anybody else did up until, um, up until Kripke did it, basically. And what we're going to see is that once you do that, once you state the theory really precisely, it becomes very easy to see what kinds of problems it's going to face. So the cluster theory is the patch for a particular problem, the problem of like how different people can know the meaning of the same name. But what we're going to see next week is that there are still like pretty serious problems even for the cluster theory.